Fist Club. This is for my loudmouth fist fighters, my under the covers reading all nighters, my late shift working in class nappers, my back of the classroom rappers, my mother tongue speaking back talkers, my always finding death threats in their lockers, my late to class little sibling caretakers, my smart ass saggy pants troublemakers, my brown gender queer hip, hip switchers, my test anxiety prone class skippers, my outside agitator walkout organizers. This is for my never meant to survivors. In kindergarten, I already knew, already knew not to go anywhere unless I was sure there wouldn't be a check-in. I was always too chicken to speak to the men with guns on their hips and slurs in their snarling lips, and I didn't even go to a school where they met me at the door. So I'm, try so I'm going to try to, com to compute just how much more afraid I'd be today if the first school club I was introduced to was a billy club. I'll try to raise the number of panic attacks I've had this year to the power of pepper spray, taser, blocks, handcuffs, and a badge. I'll try to multiply my fear by the number of kids who look like me who had their faces slammed into pavement last semester. And I know I haven't been good at math since I was told I was a bad tester, but something about the trauma of going to school under occupation seems to add up to walking out with less capacity to trust than we walked in with to fear and resistance to authority, to hyperactivity and needing to get free. Critical thinking question. Why were the millions of dollars Wake County spent on police station contracts and security guards somehow easier to budget than even half the recommended number of counselors? Answer, because our minds are worth more, are worth more to them terrified than understood. See, our schools might look like prisons, but the bars aren't for keeping us in. They're for pushing us out. Our schools are factories producing marketable products, not making good citizens, but punishing manufactured misconduct. There are more of my people incarcerated today than there were slaves in 1850, and black students in White County account for 60% of suspensions because their definition of defiance is looking kind of shifty. Schools claim to be invested in teaching critical thinking, but from us brown kids, asking questions equals dissension, which leads to detention, suspension, and apprehension by state henchmen with the intention to arrest. So ask us again why we don't feel like participating in class discussion. We dare you. Ask us why we'd rather, we'd rather spend 90 minutes in a bathroom stall or, wondering, or wandering empty halls than in your classrooms. We know that when we ask questions, we scare you. We, you thought you were ready for us. You are, you'd, already bought, you'd already bought us jumpsuits instead of graduation gowns. You'd even opened up a whole new prison by shutting some, some arts programs down. You thought you were ready for us. You thought. Us brown kids, we're ready for you too. We are healing our black eyes in peer mediation sessions, channeling Layla Ali in second round boxing lessons. We are staying up all night reading Michelle Alexander's The New Jim Crow, comprehending all kinds of things we were never supposed to know. We are working the late shift, paying the bills to stay alive, even though we knew we were never meant to survive. We are rapping about restorative justice and letting our spirits soar, spitting about the day when central prison is no more. We are standing together from AP English to ISS to alternative schools to central prison. We are teaching you a lesson, and this time you're going to have to listen to us, the brown kids the kids from the back of the bus.